All right, algebra people. Uh, we're going to begin working with some graphing of parabolas and using this to be able to find some information for our graphing of our functions, functions of x or, or parabolas with this. Let's look at number one. Y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 6, and it says use a table to graph each equation, then state the domain and the range. Now, the domain and the range, pretty much the domain for all of these is going to be infinite, okay? The reason for that is you're going to be able to choose as long as what we're doing right now is with squares, uh, x squared, uh, parabolic curves, for the most part with what we're doing, it's going to be an unlimited choice to put in for the x values within there. You can go as high as in whatever number you want or as low and negative as you want. Now, the range is going to be a little different. It depends on where the curve of the graph. If you look at what we're going to be working with, the curve of the graph has a maximum or a minimum, okay? And it all depends on the graph. If it's going to be for the range, will the minimum be a positive number or a negative number? That tells you like this one right here, this where my finger is, that is a minimum. That is the range. That means it will only go that low. And from there, it's always going to go up. Same with this one. This is as high as it's going to go. Now, we have to figure out ours with what we've done. What we do is we substitute a 2 in for the x. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. Minus 6 is 10. Our ordered pair for the first, if we put a 2 in for the x, is 2, 10. So, right to up 10, right to there. And then we put a 1 in. 1 squared is 1 times 2. 4 times 1 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. Minus 6 is 0. Not a negative 0. It's just... Yeah. Ah, I'm not getting that off. It's a 0. So our ordered pair is 1, 0. Right 1, up 0. Next one is 0. Put it in. Minus 6 is 0. Negative 6. And then negative one, put it in there, it becomes negative eight. Negative one, negative eight. And then negative two, when you work it out, it becomes negative two, negative six. Now, if you look at this, 10, zero, negative six, negative eight, that's the lowest point. And then from there, it starts going up. Now, if you look at what we've got there, it looks like we've got our range, our lowest point of our graph is that right there. Now, if we started to plot the points and connect the dots, yada, 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 within this problem, right here, and it's going up. My guess with this, if I was to go to negative three down here, I'm guessing negative three is going to be zero. I don't know. Let's just check. If I put a negative three in here, negative three squared is negative, is positive nine. Nine times two is 18, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, 18 minus 12 is 6, bring down the negative 6, and look at this, it makes 0, so negative 3, 0. Now if you look at our graph, this is what it would end up looking like, and our line of symmetry, which means the, the line which splits our graph in half perfectly, is that right there. That's our line of symmetry. So our domain is all real numbers. It's infinite, okay? It's all real numbers. Anything. It's unlimited. That's the good thing about these. Every time they ask for the domain, you're just going to say, well, it's in whatever crap and number I want to choose because this is a parabolic curve. Our curve is going to be an unlimited amount of X values I can choose to put in for it. But our range our range in this particular one has to be greater than or equal to negative 8. Why does it have to be greater than or equal to negative 8? Because our y values are greater than or equal to negative 8. Our lowest point, our minimum, why is it a minimum? Our minimum, because it's the lowest point of our graph. It goes up from there on out. There is no lower than negative 8. Okay, and our ordered pair for that is negative one, negative eight. The minimum is negative one, negative eight. It's also called something else. It's called the vertex, the vertex of the graph. Now, there's a formula that you're gonna see to find the axis of symmetry. You don't need to graph it, okay? You're gonna do some graphing, you're gonna do some work with it, you're gonna work with these things, but you don't need to do this whole chart 
to be able to see how the graph is going to go, okay? You're going to be able to find the axis of symmetry pretty easily with a, a formula that I'm going to give you. And when you find the axis of symmetry, you know that's going to be either your maximum or minimum. Plug that in for x. You'll see. I'll show you. But this problem is number one. I would like you to do numbers one, two, three, and four on page 531 for practice. Graph, find the domain, which all of them are the same domain. The range, that's either going to be your maximum or your minimum number. Okay, and if you want to find the ordered pair for the vertex and the uh, line, so blah, 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 the axis of symmetry, you can. I'm going to show you a little formula right now for the axis of symmetry right on the back of this. The formula for the axis of symmetry, and I'm going to show you using this same formula right here, the formula for the axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, Okay, the axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. Well, we know that our, our parabolic curve, our work here, is ax squared plus bx plus c. They give us this as the formula. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is our a, and this is our b in the problem. A and B. So we go over to here. X is equal to a negative B, which is 4, over 2 times A. And our A is 2, so it's 2 times 2. So 4 over 4 is X equals a negative 1. Okay? That's our axis of symmetry, negative 1. That is where our vertical line, dotted line, splits our graph. Now, if that's the case, how do we find out what our vertex is? We take negative 1 and put it in for the x value, which we already did. Okay, but we put a negative 1 in here and a negative 1 in here, and we work it all out. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And bring down the negative 6, and it works out to be negative 1, negative 8. This is our axis. This is our vertex. You see how that works? When you find the axis, all you do is substitute that in for the x value of your original equation. And that tells you your vertex when you find your answer. Okay? You don't need to do all of this. All of this stuff. Because I could have just as easily looked at my original parts of this. Oh, wait. let's turn this one around. Looked at my original parts of this used my information that it gave me to be able to plot the points. Boy, this is a lot of work. Use that information it gave me. My axis of symmetry is negative 1. So I could just make my dotted line at negative 1. My vertex is negative 1, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 8, right down there. And I know this is my minimum. That's my minimum point in this one. And it tells me in the original equation... It crosses the y-axis at negative 6. So it crosses the y-axis at negative 6 right here. I know that. Well, it's got to be even Steven right over to here. Because this is my axis of symmetry, I can just make a basic graph. And this is my vertex. Negative 1, negative 8. This is my line of symmetry. Line of symmetry, which was x is equal to... Uh, negative b over 2 times a, which ended up being x is equal to negative 1, which is what we use down here to put into the vertex. And that shows us our graph. We don't need to do that whole t-bar graph thing. We could just use this form of the axis of symmetry. Shows us what x is, and when we find out what x is, we know what the vertex of our graph is. And then we just look for our equation that we looked at before, ax squared plus bx equals c. We know c is the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. If this could be written up nice and neat for us like that, we've got most everything that we need to be able to do with this. Now, they want you to do this little graph, but practice these. These are the ones that you're going to be using more often than doing this. All righty. So if you have any questions on page 531, um, I just want you to work on numbers one through four, and we're going to go on from there tomorrow. I'll come in early tomorrow morning with the work instead of right now. 
and we'll talk about this. I'll probably do a couple more. So I will talk to you later. Bye.